to a place where streets are paved with gold, where there is no night or sorrow, where even death is swallowed, where God Himself will make His home.
morning, everybody. Hey, my name's George, and uh, boy, it is great to see you. Uh, Stacy and I were out last week, and uh, thanks for Griffin for coming by to uh, help fill in for us. Uh, it's my pleasure every week to come up here and talk about things going on in the church, uh, things that you could be uh, thinking about, getting involved with, things you can do. Let's jump in and do some of these uh, announcements, shall we, Brian? Let's. Let's do it, yeah. Okay, we uh, start with, hey, right after uh, church today, uh, we're going to have a family faith in action event uh, where you can bring your families together and do a little service. We're, we're packing brown bags for our interfaith uh, council. Uh, kids, if you're going to do this, I always like to put little notes like help I'm trapped in a brown bag factory or, you know, yeah, eat at your own risk. Those things are, people like to read while they're eating. Um, don't miss out on that today. Uh, moving on. The, the next thing we have is uh, Wendy's Spring Book Study. This is, uh, this is great, 40 Days of Community. N they're not watching the TV show, they're reading this book. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it, goes, it starts this Tuesday and it goes till May 21st. They, that's a typo. If that was a true, it'd be the 33 days of community. But they're going an extra week. They're going to make it 40. Uh, Rick Warren, very famous uh, uh, Christian uh, inspirational writer. Uh, great book. Uh, great time to get involved and uh, just get psyched to do things in community with people. Next up, speaking of community. Wendy's still looking for some people to join in and, and sing in these rehearsals for this composer festival. Uh, but don't sit too close to the organ or else you're going to look just like those people. And that, that hair does not come back. Uh, so you have to watch out. You have to be careful. But uh, it's a great thing. Uh, and uh, this, this new music coming out is, is, is really interesting and exciting. And, and the festival will be in May. So uh, there is still time to get involved. We have a Parkinson support group. This is a, in a couple weeks. It's a, it's a, it's kind of a strange time, so mark the time if if this is interesting to you. It's in the afternoon at 1:45 on a Monday, but a great opportunity if you're a caregiver or care receiver to uh, get involved in this group to get not just information but uh, a network of support. Uh, and also, just uh, speaking about networking and getting involved, this is it. This is it. I, you know, I'm always saying this to you guys. Uh, uh, number one, uh, dogs are inherently better than cats. And number two, if you really want to take advantage of church, it's good to get involved. This is a great opportunity to get involved with some mission outreach. They're the, 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 uh, the group that runs this, they'll be there Saturday uh, after the, the Saturday service and then out here. Uh, for the Sunday service, uh, touting all these different programs you can get involved with. There's, there's too many to list here, actually. Uh, but uh, do take some time to at least learn about these and uh, maybe prayerfully consider if you can get involved, if there's time. Yeah. Uh, there's always time to celebrate Pastor Brian, though, am I right? Yeah, so, so you know you're supposed to send your pictures. If, if you don't have a picture of Brian, here's a little help. Uh, you just take any newspaper and just clip out one of those police sketches. Yeah, I, I see those sketches, and, and my first thought is, like, I hope they catch that guy. And then my next thought is, eh, there's a passing resemblance to Pastor Brian. Uh, so I think you'd get away with it. Uh, we're looking forward to celebrating you, Brian. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, oh, my God. I can't believe I'm even talking about this. It's a concrete jungle out there. You have to be careful. Uh, with your parking. You have to practice safe parking. Uh, so j just keep some of these tips in mind uh, to, you know, uh, lock your car, uh, but, but, you know, get out of it first and then lock your car. And, and uh, uh, don't leave your kids in there. Bring them in. Bring them in. Uh, bring your valuables in with you. And uh, watch out for strangers. I know we invite, if you're new here, uh, we welcome you, uh, and, and specifically, we welcome you to keep your hands where we can see them. <laughs> no, honestly, I... I <laughs> no, if you're new here, let me just tell you, the, the more I get to know people here, the more suspicious I become of them. Yeah, no. But, and you've heard me tell you, half uh, the people in the choir got warrants outstanding. So, so it is important to watch out for yourself. And, the, and we're going to end today with just the, the photo uh, uh, series is uh, to send a baby photo to um, 
that hashtag there. You can email Kathy and be part of the Saturday service. That's it for me. Maybe, maybe that's it for me. I don't know. <laughs> Off we go. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. As the old saying goes, park carefully. Accidents cause people. I expected some groans on that one. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, about a week and a half from now, a week from Wednesday, <clears throat> there is a thing that's going to happen called General Conference of the United Methodist Church. General Conference normally meets every four years. Uh, the last full General Conference we had was in 2016. Uh, and then uh, the next one scheduled was 2020, and then it has been delayed four times. So um, it's going to happen a week from Wednesday, and there are some big things happening uh, for the uh, structure and uh, future of the United Methodist Church. So I will send out an email uh, to everyone and make sure that uh, you know where to link because you can watch the whole thing if you like. Um, but it's, uh, it's going to be a very meaningful time. Um, if you don't receive any emails from the church, uh, then just write your email number on a, on a card or a something uh, and put it in the offering and we'll make sure you get on the mailing list. Let's bow in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the love that you always have, that you pour out upon us, that you bless us with. We pray for this day, Lord, that it can be a day of your love, a day of growth in you, a day in, of growth in trust and love for each other. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we should do some music. You want to stand up and do music? Okay, let's stand up and sing. and Nicole and Marcia to come forward. No kids, not yet. Not yet, kids. <laughs> Okay, over the last 24 weeks, these women have been studying Disciples Bible Study. And we have been meeting on Zoom all of those days. We have gone through 75% of the Bible. 
Um, for those of you who don't know what Disciples Bible Study is, it's a wonderful program, a Bible study, helping us see how God has made a covenant with God's people and throughout history and even now is keeping that covenant and caring for us and calling us into ministry. And um, these three, as well as Marcia Skarupa and Laura Hurst Brown, who is home ill tonight, today, um, have all done this along with me. We've done it as beta testers because it's a brand new program, all done online and through an app. So it's been very fun helping them put some of the, get some of the kinks out of the app. They have been very open to any suggestions we made. And I was going to highly recommend you look into it. Um, they'll be coming out with Disciples 2 in September, as well as some six weeks and five week classes in the future. But I'm going to present all of these three with their certificates of completion. Sandra and Nicole and Nancy. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> I, they, they haven't all seen each other in person person the whole time except for occasionally here so it's always been online and on our screens so you can go ahead and have your seats kids you can come forward at this time <laughs> Okay, well, you guys all finished, a, well, not all of you, but some of you just finished a week of vacation, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yeah, it's been a good week. I thought you saw Arik. You did, I know, Arik's here today, huh? That's so well, fun. I drive my car in five days. You got to drive your car? No, my mom got to Your mom got to drive her car. Well, yeah. Well, my mom is hiring her Fixed today. Okay. Lola Lola. okay, good. Well, I was wondering, do any of you guys have any special talents? What do you do? Um, I do drumming. Drumming. Okay, what do you do? Singing. Singing. What do you do? Uh, I also sing. You also sing? What can you do, Art? Drawing. What? Drawing. Drawing. Okay. Wow. So does that make you a singer and a singer and... A drummer. A drummer. Ooh, you know what? Pastor Brian is a drummer. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was in the band in high school, and those drummers were the squirrely ones. <laughs> yeah, got to watch out for them. Okay, but can I, are those good labels for you? They're okay. They're okay. And, and today I brought some seeds with me. They're flower seeds, but well, I kind of mixed them up. What flowers do they? I don't know. I can't remember. Well, 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 I don't know, but... Well, I, got, well, I planted my sunflower seeds. Oh, you planted spring. sunflower seeds? Okay. Well, and we've got some seed bombs that we're going to take home today to plant in various places. But, mm. you know, it doesn't matter what kind of flowers these are going to be. They're all flowers. And it doesn't matter if one of you can sing, and one of you can dance, and one of you can play the drum, because you all are children of God. That's what we're talking about today in big church, is being children of God. And Isaac, sit really still. We, we like that label because that tells us how much God loves us. In fact, the Bible says that God lavishes, lavishing meaning tons and tons and tons of love on all of us because we are God's children. And that's the most important thing in life is to be God's children and to share God's love. So let's bow our heads. What do you want to tell me, Willa? Even if we just accidentally do something bad. Even if we do something bad. God still loves us. We are still God's child. But sometimes when we do that, we then remember and say, sorry, God. Huh. Yeah. Let's, let's bow our heads. Dear God. 
thank you for your love and for the name children of God. Help us to live up to your expectations. And all God's children say, Amen. Okay, let's go to Sunday school. Good morning. Before I read the call to worship with you, um, I wanted to uh, let you know that there is going to be a word that you're going to see up on the screen that says Selah. And maybe some of you already know this, but it just means pause. And I think it's not a coincidence that I'm up here reading as a choir director. It means take a breath. And I always am telling the choir to take a breath. So would you uh, mind standing and joining me in the call to worship taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But I know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Take breath. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. You may be seated. Welcome to Hope this morning and to this morning's giving moment. Whether you're in the sanctuary or watching in your home, or even if you decided to check in with us from somewhere else around the world, we're happy to have you here with us today. I hope you're enjoying your post-Easter relaxation. I mean, with all the hustle and bustle of preparing for that special holiday, the eggs and the clothes and the food, wait. You're not exhausted after celebrating Easter? It's nothing at all like preparing for Christmas, is it? And yes, the gatherings and traditions for this time of year are much less stressful, but I think there's another secret to why Easter is so much more reassuring than Christmas. At Christmas, the whole story of Jesus is just getting started, and much of the time during the retelling, we might be questioning where we stand in the grand scheme of things. But after Easter, we know. Easter and the scripture for today reminds us of the depths of God's love, a love so great that we are accepted and called the children of God. It's our job now to live our lives in the confidence that God loves us and to be examples to the world of God's love. So enjoy your post-Easter relax, but don't forget to support Hope's efforts to spread God's love throughout the world with your gifts, prayers, witness, and service. Thank you for putting your envelope or contribution in the offering plates when they're passed or in the blue boxes in the narthex. You can also use the electronic options on the church website, Venmo or Bill Pay. I know you're also going to love the music that's shared with us during the giving time. Thank you to Beth Jones and Wendy Callen as they play an uplifting favorite hymn arrangement of Blessed Assurance.
God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the many people that you have healed. We give you thanks for the love that you pour out upon us at all times. Thank you for that love. Thank you for the fellowship we have with you and with each other. Amen. Sinfulness and the hand of God in our lives making us whole. We pray, Lord, for our clarity, our honesty before you. Whether or not we understand what's going on in any given moment in our own souls. We open ourselves to you and ask you to, to be our guide, to be our comforter, to be the one who forgives and cleanses. And so we give these thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. So let's pass the peace of Christ to each other.
the scripture this morning will be read from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of God for the people of God. And I asked Ainsley, the acolyte, and she said, yes, I will. <laughs> Just straightforward, yes. And I'm sure that if she was doing the preaching today, it would be more memorable than me doing one more sermon. So, sorry, it's just me. All right, I want to say a little bit more about this uh, general conference that's coming up. Um, this is actually the 2020 General Conference, which has been delayed uh, three different times for COVID. And uh, so it'll be, um, it'll be over in the East Coast. And there's several important things that they're doing. First of all, uh, in this last year, about one-fourth of all United Methodist churches became uh, global Methodist churches. Um, mostly on the issue of uh, rights for gay people. And uh, in this part of the world, uh, it is very, very generally accepted that people are people made by God. Um, in this particular general conference, here is how they're going to approach it. Uh, first priority will be removing harmful language from the Book of Discipline. A second priority is a way to do the book of discipline, uh, they need to do it with integrity. And they need to do it with integrity, with uh, understandings that vary from continent to continent. Uh, for people in Africa, approximately one half of the countries, um, in one half of the countries of Africa, homosexuality is illegal. And so one can imagine they would have a, a, a different um, structure than the people of California. So along with uh, this experiment of starting regional conferences, they're also going to be uh, rewriting the social principles, uh, pretty much based on, on the regions. The vast majority of the Book of Discipline, our rules and regulations for being a church, will be the same uh, worldwide. Uh, but there will be variations in the uh, social principles um, as we try to figure out what is the most honest way for each group of people to follow Christ. Okay, um, 
The scripture that you heard today, uh, like many others, is the best scripture in the Bible. Uh, it is the, uh, the one that gives me the best hint, the best direction that I know of, of what it is to be with Jesus on earth and in heaven. It starts out with an assurance of God's love. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children. Now, here's the key phrase. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he, Jesus, is revealed, we will be like him, for we shall see him just as he is. So that first part, uh, we are children of God. As a parent, I know uh, that as an imperfect parent and grandparent, uh, I love my children, I love my grandchildren, and it would be very, very difficult to, uh, uh, to, not, to deny them, to uh, say that they're not my kids and my grandkids. Thankfully, my kids and grandkids uh, have never really messed up. There's still time. They have never really messed up. Never challenged us on this. But I talked with many, many parents. And they have never really messed up. And I think that this is a Give up on us, because the love of God endures forever. So there is a uh, call and response um, psalm. So I'm going to read the call part. You read the res or you say the response part. Yeah, I hear you. So what we say after every phrase is, "For His steadfast love endures forever." Let's say that a couple of times. For his best, steadfast love endures forever. For his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. For his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his steadfast love endures forever. Who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who spread out the earth on the waters, 
for his steadfast love endures forever. Who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day and the moon uh, to rule overnight, for his steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever, and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. That's Psalm 136. There are some verses in the middle of it uh, that I, I didn't, didn't read aloud this time. I encourage you to. Um, especially since these are violent times, uh, there are things happening around the world that are very, very scary, uh, very deadly. And uh, a lot of the stuff from the middle of that psalm uh, is protection from God in time of war. Steadfast love, that's what God does. And if there's something that, that describes the character of God and the actions of God, it is just that, steadfast love. That's what Jesus does. He loves steadfastly and eternally. In the New Testament, that same love is called agape love. That's what the Holy Spirit creates in us, the knowledge of God's love and the likeness of Jesus Christ. The more we dwell in Jesus, the more we become like Jesus. So here it is again. This is the most important part. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet been revealed. But what we do know is this. When Jesus is revealed, we will be like him, for we shall see him just as he is. I have a lot of love for my, uh, my dad. Um, he was way far from perfect because you know what he was? It wasn't because he was a drummer. It's because he's a human being. And uh, us human beings who live close to him um, could see the things that, uh, that he messed up in. And yet as he became closer to God, closer to Jesus Christ, uh, read the Bible, he became more and more Christ-like throughout his life. Uh, he became a religious science um, pastor and uh, discovered that uh, he liked the, the systems of the United Methodist Church better because we have better supportive systems. But now when I picture him in heaven since 2007, he is dwelling with Jesus. He is dwelling face to face with Jesus. And what I know of him is what I know of anyone who dwells with Jesus on earth or in heaven. The more he sees Jesus, the more he dwells with Jesus, the more he's face to face with Jesus, the more he will become like Jesus. And God made us as unique individuals. And so the more that we become like Jesus Christ, the more unique that we become. As every person in this room dwells in Jesus Christ, remains, abides in Christ, we come, become more Christ-like. And that doesn't mean we're going to be the same. It means uh, that what God created in each of you, in each of us, will become more complete, more perfect, more whole, more usable for the greater glory of God. I like you a lot. You are wonderful and you are beautiful just as you are. I get the, the, the great place here where I get to see all of your faces at one time. I like who, are you, who you are becoming or is it whom you are becoming. 
That, anyway, who or whom? I, I like who you're becoming even more than I like you right now. And as you become more like Jesus, you become even more the real you who God created you to be. I love you as you are, and I love who you will be. I have been thinking lately about when you're jerking around with the little kids and say, so what are you going to be when you grow up? Um, if any of our lives are uh, indications, the answer will not be, uh, I will be a doctor, I will be a policeman, I will be a uh, pro football player. Um, it may be that, but who each of you are is so much more. You are so many things at one time. You do so many things at one time. Your thoughts are so wonderfully varied that you more become in Christ, the more you, the whole you, becomes you. And our response, all those who have this hope in him purify themselves just to see as pure. Uh, now it's time for a really ridiculous example, although it's not really a joke, it's just a ridiculous example. Um, I'm really enjoying uh, a little game called Wordscapes. Anybody played Wordscapes? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's addictive, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Wordscapes is fun. It's, it's uh, this little, little circle that has six or seven letters and you draw lines uh, in order to make a word. And then when you get the right word, it, it's put up in this little crossword puzzle kind of thing. And um, I like it a lot because no matter how long it takes, I always finish it. There's maybe like seven words and like some of them won't come to me until tomorrow morning. That's fine, I'll finish it. And it is really fun to have one thing in my life that I know I can complete. <laughs> and it feels so good that even when it's like, oh, okay, finally I got that word and I can go to sleep. It's like, no, no, I just had a win. I want to get another win. <laughs> Although there's a lot of commercials. I don't know how to get around the commercials. So. When I got my brain stem surgery years ago, I asked the doctor if I would be able to play the piano when the surgery is done. And he said yes, with about 10,000 hours of practice. <laughs> and he was right. If I had practiced 10,000 hours, I would be able to play the piano somewhat. I didn't, so I don't. But if there is truly something that we deeply want to do, we can dedicate it, dedicate thousands of hours to that. What is important to me? Having a wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ and people. Uh, that's the important thing. So I will abide in Christ. I will remain in Christ. I will stay with Christ uh, for 10,000 hours just to start. Uh, I'll be doing all the things I normally do, but with the awareness of the presence of Jesus Christ. Because I want to become like Jesus. The more I can see Jesus face to face, the more Christ-like I can become. Uh, recently, when I've been in uh, times of confusion or turmoil, um, I say to myself, one thing I can do is just stand with Jesus. And to stand with Jesus means mostly that we will continue in love for God and people and have as much integrity as we can muster up at this moment. And then when we don't muster up enough integrity, there's always forgiveness. I want to become like Jesus and I want you to become like Jesus. And for me, that is even better than playing the piano. I don't know if it is for you, but uh, yeah, it is. Far out. Now, the next four verses tell us what we are to do on the way to being Christ-like. The least we can try to do is cooperate. 
Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has uh, either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous. What if you were struggling in the middle of this life and, and you have your ordinary little addictions, maybe big addictions. You have the sins that you keep on struggling with. And what if you knew that my, like my stupid little game that by the end of the game you're going to get it finished. You're going to be a whole person. Well, that's what I believe this scripture does for us. Uh, a lot of that happens right here in this life as you abide in Christ, as you remain in Christ, as you hang around Jesus Christ in the middle of all that you do in life. Then you become more and more Christ-like. John Wesley had words to describe abiding in Christ, and he called it practicing the means of grace. Practice doing the things that God has given us as ways, uh, the ways and means of knowing Jesus. Now, I've searched John Wesley's writings to find his comprehensive list of the means of grace, and he never gives one. But he uses that phrase, means of grace, a lot without narrowing it down to something that could be just a formula. And that's fine because hanging out with Jesus is not formulaic any more than hanging out with a friend is formulaic. There's some things that are true about friendship, things that are true about hanging out with Jesus, but it's not just a formula. Here are some of the means of grace, according to John Wesley. And he divides these into what he calls work of piety and works of mercy. One of them is uh, the religious things we do, the faith things we do, and the other one is the, uh, the things that we do for others because of our faith. So here's some of the individual practices. Uh, reading scriptures, meditating on scriptures, studying the scriptures, Prayer, fasting, regularly attending worship. Thank you for being here. Healthy living and sharing our faith with others. So those are some individual practices that we do. And then communal practices uh, we share in the sacraments. Uh, we have Christian conferencing, uh, which we don't call Christian conferencing anymore, but it's when uh, we have sincere conversations with each other uh, and try to figure out what is the right thing to do, where is the right way to go right now. And Bible study. Works of mercy, these are actions of faith that we do for other people. Doing good works. Visiting the sick, visiting those in prison, feeding the hungry, and giving generously as God calls to the needs of others. Communal practices, acts of mercy that we do together, seeking justice, ending oppression and discrimination. For instance, John Wesley challenged Methodists to end slavery and addressing the needs of the poor. Making disciples, growing congregations of disciples of Jesus and transforming the world is part of a spiritual adventure, individually and together, uh, that is empowered and guided by the Holy Spirit as churches engage in these means of grace. Spiritual goals are complicated, are, are <laughs> complicated, are accomplished by connecting the means of grace with proven vital church practices such as planning, strategic direction, prioritization, clear focusing, alignment, mission projects. So again, the simple word is keep going. 
remain in Christ. Abide in Christ. And you'll become more like him. Just practice hanging out with Jesus. Amen. Lord God, we pray for your peace throughout the world, peace with justice, reliable peace that helps us to walk together as individuals and as nations. Help us, Lord, to follow you as a church, as individuals, to be your disciples and to discover the joy that you have for us because of that. We pray, Lord, for the people among us who are sick, who are in need of help. We pray for Phoebe. We pray for Anne. We pray for Nate. We pray for David and Barbara's daughter. We pray for Julie. We pray for Brent Criswell, retired pastor with severe COVID pneumonia. And we have a time of silent prayer now, but in, in our silence, please also say aloud uh, the names of people or situations in the world that need God's presence and help. Let's pray in silence. And now in the love of Christ, we share in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing the closing hymn together, Be Thou My Vision.
wherever you go, whatever you do today, abide in Christ who is with you and who loves you and who will always love you. Go in peace. Mm.